Steve Dangle and Adam Wilde. Panigo Pizza presents. We, we just heard that in the intro, Steve. Oh, did we? Yeah, we okay. did. Well... Guess what? It it's presented still, again. It's still presented. You know what? It's true. Uh, and it's 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 actually it's a podcast is brought to you by Panago Pizza. It's what's on the inside that counts, isn't that's it? Right. Isn't it? It absolutely is. Thing. Oh, that's why that you have the Jesse's got a puck. Um, so NHL trade deadline with a very special Monday night edition of the Steve Dangle podcast. Oh. However, if you're listening on Sportsnet 590, the fan, it's Tuesday night. Hi, Tuesday. <laughs> How did Neilander? <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <laughs> I bet Neilander did great last night. Let's talk about all the great things Neilander did yeah. last night, should we? Well, and this is unprecedented because usually Adam gets datum on me, and he does not allow me to watch the Leaf game when it's on while we're recording. But mm-hmm. tonight, I mean, it's it's Neilander. Yeah, I get to watch Neilander. Come on, man. Yeah. Which is arguably the biggest story of trade deadline day. It absolutely is. Like, as a Leaf fan, how are you not excited after all this? Even though literally nothing happened on the trade front, I, I don't know how you can't be excited. I, I think I think they were saving this one, like, just in case no trades happen. Let's bring up the kids and then cause a stir. Now, I want to I want to just say um, I got a message from Joe Petrella, uh, one of our listeners who, who f- drove into town today. He's like, "Are you guys going to be at the game tonight?" He didn't know that Nylander, we didn't none of us knew that Nylander and Kapanen no. and Hyman and Carrick would be playing as well cuz they're playing as well. And Sashnikov. And Sashnikov. We didn't mm. know at that point and I'm and and I'm like, "No, man, like we don't normally go to games cuz we're from Toronto and you when you're from Toronto, you don't normally go to games." If I go to two in a season, that's, that's a good year. That's a good year. Um but yeah, he uh, he was driving into town, and, and I, I'm just thinking about him right now, because he's watching William Nylander's first game. He and, sure is. And you know, I, I, I've i got a story, Jesse, and I want to talk to I want to tell Jesse his story. Oh, okay, because good. History, because history... Does Steve know this story? History was obviously being made tonight. Steve knows this story. Okay. History is being made tonight, and I know, I know of a person who had the opportunity to go tonight. Okay. The opportunity to go, and knew, mm-hmm. knew that... Tonight, mm-hmm. um, Neilander was playing. Okay. Now, if you're a person, you're a Leaf fan. A human being. And the best prospect since Wendell Clark is playing his first game in the NHL. Do Which, you, do, okay. you, do you A, go Just, to... Justin Pogge begs to differ. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. Do you A, if you know this, mm. Neilander's playing, do you A, cancel all plans and go? Okay. Or B... Continue your plan with your friends and go to work. See, I think when one of your plans is to record the Steve Dangle podcast, you can't cancel. And Steve Dangle did not. Steve could have been at the game tonight. Could It's going on right now, and you are here in the studio. And my first question about that is, what's wrong with you? Uh, I know I'm smiling on the outside, but I promise I'm dead inside. Are, are you are you Tim Murray <laughs> screaming internally right now? <laughs> we we have to go see a game now. We owe you for this. I think it won't sink in until the hats hit the ice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> when, when he scores, his, oh no, oh, never mind. No, no, Steven no, no. Stamkos almost Whoa, scored. Stamkos- did Spark stop that? Well, anyway, this is fascinating. This is why we don't watch the game. This is why we don't watch the game. But the yeah. Leafs, like, I could have been there. But you know who got the ticket instead, though? Mrs. Dangle. Mrs. Dangle. <laughs> and she tweeted me, what's his number? <laughs> I'm like, that's, oh. that's not a good start. No. <laughs> <laughs> but 39. 39, honey. Um, <laughs> is it weird to me that it feels felt like the deadline uh, happened in the 1990s because a Stefan Matteau and Pat Maroon were traded today. Alex Tanga. Oh, yeah. And Alex Tanga. <laughs> yeah. Too. Like, yeah. it felt like, I was like, is this the 90s? Where did he yeah. even go? Who? Arizona, right? Yeah, Mateau? Arizona, yeah. Oh, it's oh. A, I mean, thank you for having that open, Adam. Did, you, Adam's got the trade tracker open, and he barely even needs to scroll. <laughs> like, yeah, there were, like, there's, there's a couple trades. That, um, now, we're going to go through a couple of them, and then we'll get to the Leafs in the second half of the show, because there's a lot to get to. We're also going to have on one of the guys from Russian Machine Never Breaks. One of my favorite people, Ian Oland, and he's going to talk about Brooks Like and Connor Carrick and uh, that whole Daniel Winnick trade. I'm going to I'm gonna save it for them, but I've heard an incredible Brooks Like story that I think if if Ian doesn't know it, then I'm, we'll, we'll talk. Ian probably knows he, this story. They are so embedded in the Capitals and the Capitals fan base. He knows base. this story. He might know the story, and if he doesn't, I'm sure it'll blow him away. No, no, no blog, no individual blog. God love, you know, some of the ones my friends work for, but no blog uh, covers one team better than Russian Machine Never Breaks. 
Wow. Yeah, it's my favorite. Wow. Absolute favorite. That's saying something. Okay, so let's go through the trades today. I mean, we don't need to talk about Corey Corey Potter going to Arizona for future considerations. So we're going to go to the bigger ones, um, of which there weren't many. Although Patrick Maroon going to the Edmonton Oilers, people have to be kind of excited about. He's a pretty good player. You know, pretty good possession-wise. Um, he was on a bit of a hot streak recently. Very large. Has a big old beard. Although, uh, he does, he, there is one major critic. Drew Doughty. Mm-hmm. Drew Doughty. Because he was on the receiving end of the famous, Buddy, you suck at hockey! You've been oh. in the minors for how long? You, you never heard that clip? No. From uh, the stadium series in California. Get out! I'm sure if you YouTube Buddy, you suck at hockey, <laughs> you would hear Drew Doughty just giving it to Pat Maroon. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna have to check that out. That's amazing. Okay, so next trade, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep going here. Just gonna roll. Jamie McGinn. This is a big one. Going to the Anaheim Ducks from the Buffalo Sabers. Buffalo gets a conditional third rounder. I don't know specifically. It goes up to a second. I don't remember what for. Okay, I'm sure it's for playoff playoff performance. performance. Um, and I mean, Jamie, Jamie McGinn, uh, pretty notable guy. Pretty notable this year. Uh, most people say he's kind of he's kind of got that trade deadline virus. Like good player or bad system, so it made it to look better. Uh, he's just, he's just, he's good for what's available, I guess, you know? But okay. th- that doesn't mean he's actually going to help out the Ducks huge, but you never know. Stephon Mateau uh, and Devontae Smith Pelly. Montreal Canadiens get Mateau. Devontae Smith Pelly goes to the Devils. Interesting because Devontae Smith Pelly was just traded to Montreal last trade deadline. Was he not from Anaheim? Uh, for, I want to say, Yuri Seikach? Yes, yeah. and Seikach was just waved and then picked up. He he loves just going somewhere and uh, ripping on... Ri- Adam had to wave me down. And uh, ripping on whatever team he played for. It's not a good look. Not a good look. I, I was texting Berkshire about this trade, and I, I was just imagining the conversation between Bergevin and Tyrion. Uh, the fans are pretty mad at us. French guy? French guy! <laughs> and apparently he doesn't even speak really good French. Um, Devontae smith Pelly apparently didn't take the... Didn't take the trade well. No, Devontae Smith Pelly, who seemed to really like playing for the Habs, is going to be going to New Jersey. That's a bummer, man. I really, I hope, I hope going to Jersey isn't a bummer though. Yeah, now we can play in the playoffs. Yeah, well, they got a better shot than Montreal. Mm-hmm. Not much of a better one, um, but yeah, it's it's realistic for them. Uh, the one thing I would say, like more than most players in the league, I really want to see Smith Pelly succeed. And I know Habs fans weren't huge fans of him. Honestly, watching him in junior, I he's one of those guys where I could have swore. Could have swore that was a player. And he, he mucks it up in the slot really well. He just, no no finish at the NHL level. Maybe he'll find it. Uh, this is how I know. I, f- I feel, I felt for a while that the Buffalo Sabres, Buffalo Sabres, sorry, Boston Bruins are in trouble. And it's Buffalo started, Sabres are in trouble. Yeah, well, for sure. <laughs> but the Boston Bruins are in trouble to me, like, based on... What they did last year with uh, Lucic and the three first rounders in a row, and drafting weird th- first rounders, and then you know, and then trashing them to the media when they failed their physicals, and all of those things, and then not a good move, and then today kind of confirmed it because the Boston Bruins are slowly becoming the 2010 Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh, they acquired both John Michael Lyles and Lee Stempniak. <laughs> ah, yes. Lee Stemniak, who gets acquired at every trade deadline he for does. some reason. He does. Four out of the last six. <sighs> what did the Bruins give up for John Michael Lyles? This is Anthony Camara, who I don't know much about. Uh, I believe he made Team Canada two years ago. That's not Two bad. or three years ago. A third this year and a fifth next year. That's a lot. That's a lot for John Michael Lyles at 35 years old. And by the way, still making $4 million a season, or 3.75. Yeah, and the Leafs got Tim Gleason. Uh, then, <laughs> yeah, seriously, John Michael, I will never see his name and find happiness ever again. No, especially because he keeps scoring. Now he's back in the division, Steve. Oh, it's awesome. Now he's going to play the Leafs more, Steve. It's awesome, Adam. No, you know what? Uh, the Bruins did give up a lot. Uh, a lot. And, and a lot of people criticize them. I'm actually going to go to bat for them a bit because you look at Chara and how old he is. And I mean, how competitive are the Bruins going to be really? You know, once he's done, I, they're going to have to retool. Well, quite you don't a bit, retool with thirty-five-year-old John Michael Lyles. No, but the I UFA agree. Pending and your cap strapped as it is. I agree with the idea of buying, though. Mm-hmm. I, maybe not like that. I'm not saying it was. You know, all their buying was good, but 
Getting Lyles on the back end, they needed some help back there. Getting Stemniak, good possession player, you know, could add hold some on, scoring. And, on, and no, they no. bought by keeping Erickson. Hold on. Hold on. What? Because do you know what they gave up for Stepniak? Wasn't it a second and a fourth? Yeah. The so uh, Daniel this, Winnick special from so, last year. So, <laughs> the, in, Sorry, the first version. <laughs> in <laughs> the John serious. Michael Lyles and Lee Stepniak trades, the Bruins gave up their third, sorry, second, third, and fourth picks this year and their fifth next year. But I wonder Can you bring if, up their general manager page for a sec, Jesse? I have it up. I what, wonder how if many they, draft picks they have this year. Do, 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 do. They got two firsts. A okay, second, that's pretty good. A two fifths, a sixth, and a seventh. So one, two, two three. Two firsts four, can five, get you six. something. They got seven picks. Or you yeah. can just pick tw- twice in the first round, which you should. And even though a lot of people don't like their first round picks from last year, of which there were three, uh, that doesn't mean the organization feels that way. You know, right? The regime that picked them is still that's, the ones that are there. So they, still, that they is probably a, that's a high price for Lee Stemniak. They probably mm-hmm. feel good about it, though. They probably feel good about oh, it. Oh man. Okay. All right. So the, we're going to move on. Um, a lot of Senators fans choked up about this. Yeah. A lot of leave talk coming, by the way. Yes, Shane. Pr- wait, we're just covering the NHL first. Oh, we yeah. got with the, the we're backloading the show like Col- Kovalchuk's contact, contract. In reverse. Ooh, um, we don't care about years five, six, and seven. Loading. Exactly. We're backloading it. Shane Prince going to the Islanders. Third round pick going to the Senators. People are really sort of upset about Shane Prince. Well, it sounds like he's he's going to be quite the player, Mr. Prince. Uh, it sounds like he could be a king, you see. Ah, because, because he's a prince. You That's, see, and uh, no. a lot of people were tweeting, oh, you know, that Shane Prince trade, uh, you know, screwed the Leafs out of getting a pick for P.A. Parento. Uh, maybe so. Uh, or, you know, Prince is just a younger version. Like, what, wouldn't you want that one? No offense to PA, but, um, you know, you should go for the younger player, I think. And, and also, I was saying this to, I was saying this to Down Goes Brown today. I had, I had dinner with, uh, Sean McIndoe. Okay. Down Goes Brown and also Dmitry Filipovich. Um, uh, the Islanders don't scare me. Just this Wow, year, are you Paul piercing the Islanders right now? They don't scare me. No, they don't. They don't scare me. I, I don't know. There's, there's something about this year's team. I don't know if it's the goaltending or what. They're good. I'm not denying they're good. Um, they'll probably make the playoffs. Something about them doesn't scare me. I don't know. I thought they'd be better. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Okay. Uh, a couple more trades of of real note. Brandon Peary to the Ducks, six pick. Um, Dallas Stars got Chris Russell, uh, and they gave up. Uh, Yerky, uh, Yoki Paka. Yoki Paka. Yoki Paka. And Brett Pollock and a second round draft pick conditional on, I guess, the Dallas Stars doing well enough in the playoffs. I don't know what the uh, condition is. Uh, the condition. The finals, is it? Conference final. Conference. If they go to That's the conference final, it's a good bet. It goes up to a first. Whoa. That's a big deal. That's a very big deal. That's now, a lot. The problem is uh, they're in the Central Division. And if they don't get the. Blackhawks in the first round, they'll get them in the second. And if you play the Blackhawks, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> so, especially, especially if you're the offensively minded Dallas Stars. Yeah, well, and there's another team where they, I should be more scared of them. And offensively, they're absolutely dynamite. But God, Niemi and Lettinen taking up over $10 million a year cap for the next three years. Out of their minds with those deals. Now, Out of I, their minds. I thought it was interesting that you brought that up because you know there was some some rumors of Russell and Dallas being a potential fit uh, among other teams. And I thought if that deal went through, how do the Flames not take on a half-salaried Niemi? No idea. Because maybe they have maybe no, the Stars didn't want to do that. They have no. Well, maybe not. But they have no goaltending for next year. Not that that's really a problem, because I'm sure. I mean, James Reimer's on the market. I'm sure Brian Burke will be all over that. Uh, there's, Jonathan Bernier. There's. I mean, there's tons of options for you. It's not like you need to figure it out right now. However, I just kind of thought that would be something that I would have thought Dallas would have wanted. Well, look at what the Leafs got for James Reimer. There's a reason they only got that for James Reimer. Well, one, you combine the two trades, but two, uh, you can get a goalie. You can get a goalie probably off the street. <laughs> Does anyone know how to do the butterfly? And there you go. There's your goalie for the night. Right. Like, it's just, goalies have never been better than they are today. Ever. And it's ever, driven ever. their price down. You drop Alex Daylock into the 70s, he wins a Vesna. <laughs> That's crazy. You know, but um, because of that, like, it's supply and demand, right? It's supply and demand. Like, you're, are you telling me James Reimer isn't more valuable to a team than P.A. Parento? Of course not. But that's the going rate. 
Funny. It's, really funny. It's weird. Um, Arizona Coyotes and Avalanche swing up. Very peculiar deal. Uh, Such Ma- an Avalanche deal. Michael mm-hmm. Bodker for Tangay, Bleakley, and Wood. Yes. Uh, supposedly pretty good prospects, but it's just another example of the Avalanche going, analytics be damned. <laughs> We're going for it. Yeah, Bodkers are not nice. Um, and it sounds like a pure rental unless they plan on giving him the oh, supposedly six million. six million bucks he wants. Which, you're a little out of your mind, bud. <laughs> and, and then there was a minor deal, Dennis Robertson and Drew McIntyre. Uh, if you're Drew McIntyre, <laughs> that just sucks. Both related to the Leafs. Robertson was drafted by the Leafs. I, I don't know if they ever qualified him. And Drew McIntyre played like, I don't know, six games? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and played a lot for the Marlies. And I believe went Fun. deep into the playoffs with the Marlies. Did he not? He was good. He was one of their better AHL goalies over the last 10 years. Um, I, I, I do want to kind of quickly mention that Eric Stahl was dealt yesterday. And, and that's... I mean, the, what, what Carolina got for him, I, I think we got to give Carolina real credit here. Ron Francis has done a great job of doing exactly what the Leafs have been doing, stripping it and retooling with draft picks. I mean, he got two second round picks in, in a row, 2016, 2017, and a, a prospect, Alexi Sorella. Uh, yeah, and supposedly he's, he's hit or miss. So okay. he, he's a will see. So he got a will see high, high, and high, two will sees. High reward. Could be high reward or nothing or nothing, but all the same, you still got two second round picks out of that. And the Carolina Hurricanes have drafted fairly well up until I would say recently. And they've they've got a they've got a ton of picks. Noah Hannafin still very yeah. young in the team. Jeff Skinner, who everyone keeps throwing into trade rumors, is still in his early twenties. Carolina will be a team to watch. And they sit four points back of a playoff spot, which is interesting. I, like they could still do it. That's like the a, thing in a rebuilding year. Uh, imagine the Rangers and Hurricanes somehow meet. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? Like, just that would be one of those great NHL weirdo stories. I don't know that it'll happen, but two teams you got to be pretty stoked aren't in the Leafs division. Uh, probably Carolina and New Jersey, just because they seem to be doing all the right things for the future. And, and, and interesting to hear New Jersey doing all the right thing. It's, and, and it's funny because Lou Lamorella coming to Toronto, like we were so critical of him getting all the old guys, all the old guys in New Jersey. But then he comes to Toronto, starts doing all the things that we've been screaming at Leafs management, former Leafs management, to do. And then New Jersey ends up doing the exact same thing he was doing. Left them in good hands. Hired John Hines uh, from the Pittsburgh Penguins AHL affiliate. Oh, I think there was a quote I said last episode, and I remember the origin now. So it was Ryan Lambert, um, and there was a quote about hiring John Hines, who's done a fantastic job in New Jersey, and supposedly... One of the hesitations of NHL executives for hiring him is he's kind of a short guy, and they didn't think because of his height he would command respect in the dressing Shut room. Shut <laughs> up! That is so from that scene in Moneyball. Like, well, his girlfriend's ugly, so he's got no, he's got, yeah, no, he's confidence got no confidence. Got no oh confidence. Oh my god! Are you and so serious? Ryan Lambert goes, you know, just the latest in a series called "Literally Anybody Could Be an NHL Executive." <laughs> it's true. He's done that a lot. He's tweeted a lot about that sort of thing. I mean, come on. Come on! Well, and and the biggest slam dunk today was the Canucks selling, and they sold nothing. Like the Leafs. Okay, you can say they did nothing. I got a whole list in front of me if you want to get Which to it. Which we will get into. Block? We will get into next block. They, all the all that they've done since February 9th is insane. The Canucks. They got rid of Hunter Shinkarik. <laughs> And and have Ham Hughes and Verbata. Mm-hmm. Ham Hughes came out and said, "Well, I want to stay here long term." And I I was laughing because one of our friends at the Leafs Nation, Justin Fisher, was saying that would be a mistake. <laughs> that, I mean, <laughs> you want to stay there, but but you gave him the power. You gave it's like when everyone got mad at Sundin for not leaving. You, well, okay, if you don't want to, if you don't want him to have that power, don't give it to him. You know, I I'll, I'll I'll look at Sundin. And Ham Hughes sideways and be like, why wouldn't you want to leave? This team is going nowhere very quickly. But you gave them the power. And because they got that power, they probably left money on the table. What about Radom Verbata? How did they not sell him? I mean, that's a guy up until this year who's been a pretty good producer. Uh, supposedly he had a list too. Like, it just... Uh, it sucks. Wow. Again, Vancouver, they're going man. nowhere Vancouver. at the speed of light. <laughs> Nowhere. I've never seen, and it's it's <laughs> honestly they oh gotta fire God. they gotta fire Benning so quick, and the Aquilinis need to stop messing with that team because you look at some of the parts they have in place, like a Thatcher Demko is their future in net, 
Bo Horvat, Jake Furtanen, Jared McCann. Like, they don't have to suck. No. You can write this ship pretty, pretty quick. quickly, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, if they decided to rebuild today, they're already 18 to, to 24 months ahead of the Leafs. They, it's like you can see the iceberg. You have the ability to move the Titanic away from the iceberg. And they're just going, nope, uh, full steam ahead. <laughs> We're going right to crush the iceberg. <laughs> Screw Leo We're DiCaprio. going right through it. <laughs> <laughs> the Boston Bruins would have gone through the iceberg. Let's do it. <laughs> Everybody get your yoga pants and your granola. We're going. <laughs> you love the yoga pants and granola. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I just, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. But anyway, Eric Stahl's going to be a New York Ranger. Oh, that's right. <laughs> man. You know, because we get off track sometimes. Um, and that's, I mean, that's cool. I feel he, like... He has it in his in his rider that he's got to play with at least one brother. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. I, I actually tweeted that. I'm like, is Eric the first one to play with all the Stahl brothers? And Jared's in the ECHL right now. So Jordan's all alone in Carolina. Brutal. Brutal. Awful. Brutal. Uh, I would love to see. Uh, I'd love to see Eric Stahl do well. I don't. The way the same thing you said about the Islanders. I feel the same way about the Rangers. And I know Rangers fans aren't going to like me for that because they've done pretty well this year. But their their opportunity, and I think they recognize it, is now. It's yeah, now. That's another team with you know some good young parts, but they definitely need to win now. I mean, the it's it's about Henrik Lundqvist, right? It is. It's all based on him. And when he starts to dip, you are going to be eliminated from the playoffs pretty quick. <laughs> And there's another team in a really rough position because uh, depending on how all the chips uh, fall in place for the for playoff spots, you make it out around one, you go hooray, and the Capitals. Have fun with that. Oh, the Capitals. Speaking have, of which, I mean, if anyone's going to have fun with that, it could be the Rangers, but... Uh, we are going to talk to uh, Russian Machine Never Breaks. We're going to break right now, actually, early on Sportsnet 590 The Fan. We're going to come back. We're going to give you in a call, and we're going to talk about... Uh, firstly, the Washington Toronto trade. Yes. Uh, and and talk a little bit more about the Capitals playoff run, and then going all Leafs all the time. Yeah. Because we're getting crazy right here Ooh. on Sportsnet 590 The Fan. It is the Steve Dangle podcast. One of the biggest trades the Leafs made, uh, you know, going into the deadline. It wasn't the actual deadline. It was pretty close. Pretty close. <laughs> yeah, we we can still call it a deadline. With, move. Within twenty four hours of the deadline, was with the Washington Capitals. Brooks Light coming our way. Daniel Wittick going the other way. Yes. Um, and t- here to talk about it and a really kind of uh, really eventful trade deadline for the first place team is a guy that covers the first place team. Yes, this is Ian Oland of Russian Machine Never Breaks. Hello, sir. Hey guys, how's it going? Ian, it's a pleasure to have you on. Do you know that Steve paid you a huge compliment earlier in the show? And he I said that do. he said that you're yeah, of, of all the blogs that cover any particular team, he said your blog is the best team coverage he's ever seen. And I mean it. Well, that, that means a lot, Steve, especially because I don't sleep at all. So, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> do you. Is it all you? Uh, no, it's not all me. Uh, it's me, Peter, uh, Chris. We have a few, uh, we have like a team of like six or seven. But I'd say I, I do like predominantly like 50, 60 percent of the, the silly stuff and, and a lot of the news stuff. So uh, at times uh, it, it can be a little hairy, definitely. They were instrumental in, in breaking stories last year, like uh, Mike Green uh, getting his sticks from fans. Wow. Like <laughs> they basically, yada, yada, yada. They, di- they discontinued the sticks that he used. So uh, they put it out there and fans started bringing in, like, autographed Mike Green sticks. Like, here, do you want to use this? And he was putting up points in the NHL with sticks that fans gave him. That's amazing. By the way, did they start making his sticks again after that? I remember that story. Mm, I don't um, think... Yes, they, they did, but they didn't. Uh, what happened was is that CNT was uh, a specific uh, type of... I, I'm really not great at explaining it. Basically, it's just this, like, carbon nanotube stuff that when they tested it on, like, mice, it gave them cancer. So they had to, like, oh, wow. <laughs> so they had to stop making it and just continue it. So, uh, Ethan, whatever whatever type of thing they used with the sticks afterwards, it was never really quite the same, even though Green would call them and they'd work with them. And it was really funny because when I talked to both sides, you know, Green would be like, it's just, it's just never the same. And then Ethan would be like, it's exactly the same. He's just superstitious. Uh, and so it, just went, it went back and forth and it was, it was uh, very funny. I mean, Last year, I'd be at work. I'd be getting text messages from from Green, like, "Hey, uh, you know, uh, you have like three or four more, and, and then like some more fans would reach out." 
So I'd be texting back and forth. I'd be having meetings. And on top of that, with Armin B. And so it was. It was always very, very. Uh, uh, you know, the blog is always very exciting, and we're very, very lucky to have the audience that we have. Uh, and you know, I do. You know, I let it kind of run my life a little bit. Uh, but but it's definitely fun. Now, as we all do. Did you know? Like did you know, Ian, that Steve could have been at my, uh, Michael Nylander, William Nylander's first game for the Toronto Maple Leafs tonight, and chose instead to podcast? Wow, wow, Steve, that's dedication, though. Right. I understand it. I understand it. You know, I like, don't. Uh, <laughs> Jesse party. doesn't. No, should have went. <laughs> it, it would be better if I understood it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel stupid. No, <laughs> it's true. All right, so so Ian, let's let's. For, for, first off, I want to ask you, what's it feel like to have a team in first place? Yeah. Um. You know, it. The Capitals, it's, by the way, Capitals, everyone, Capitals. Yes. It's that's kind of an interesting question because uh, you know the Capitals were really, really bad for a while. Uh, you know, I, my fandom kind of was a little bit for the Caps went to the Stanley Cup Finals in 1998. Uh, mm-hmm. Then they kind of got Yager. They got bad. Uh, then they, they completely tanked the team like you guys are doing right now in Toronto. Um, oh, shucks. And, <laughs> and then uh, they got lucky enough to get Ovechkin. And then uh, we saw the rise about three or four years after that with the playoffs. And then they just couldn't get to that top level. So, it, it kind of has been gradual. Uh, it was really painful a few years ago with, with Oates. Uh, you see him more concerned about, like, guys' stick curves than, you know, playing well together. And, you know, uh, they, they, you know Oates almost ruined Braden Holby, which was amazing. So, uh, you know, just seeing Trotz come in, a veteran coach, uh, seeing the team play, to, you know, play together and, and have so much talent, uh, you know, Brian McClellan, uh, who was basically George McPhee's protege, he came in and replaced McPhee. But you basically have a bunch of guys McPhee drafted that were really, really good. And then you have some of McClellan's aggressive moves. And it, it's really nice, you know. Um, you know, from my position of blogging, uh, it, it's really fun to see how excited people are. Uh, there's not really a lot of negative talk. You know, the only real negative talk, hilariously enough, was was Brooks like most of the year. Uh, so um, it, it's been, it's been really fun. Uh, but I think the Capitals have consistently lost in the playoffs over my fandom. Uh, so <laughs> Hey, that's better than consistently guys, losing in the regular season, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think you guys have like 20 Stanley Cups. Like we don't have any. Well, and- yeah. The, in, in a different century. Yeah. yeah, prior to the moon landing. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, like I don't even think was Ma- yeah. The, this is pre Madonna, pre David Bowie. I'm pretty like, sure it was. I think it might have been pre JFK assassination. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't that far. No, that was sixty three, sixty four ish. Oh, okay. So they've won like a cup since, since then. then. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but basically, you know, I just I'm I'm like. Everybody's trying to enjoy it, but it's really hard because we're just like bracing ourselves for the playoffs. The team is really built well, but you know I still see a, a, maybe a hole or two. You know, so I'm focusing on the hole and two instead of you know how good the team's playing because that's just my mentality. So that's kind of what it's like. You know? Ah, you're a creature of the internet. <laughs> But, Focus but, on the negative, <laughs> and we can we can relate to you because you're just all you're focused on is the impending doom. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Speaking of the holes, so this trade goes down, and we'll talk about the trade. Uh, you know, the Capitals free up a bunch of cap space by uh, ha, cap space. You see, because because uh, they free it up uh, by trading Brooks. Like, yep. look at all this cap space. We can do whatever we want with it. And unless I missed something, they didn't do anything with it. Um, see, now, Steve, there is some context here. Okay, what's the context? The context is, is that uh, the Capitals have a few RFAs that are coming up, uh, and then the, the year after next, Evgeny Kuznetsov comes up. Oh. And so, That's gonna you suck. know, I'm sure they would have loved to have another depth player, a third or fourth line player, but, uh, you know... They're really, really stacked right now in terms of, of, of talent and, and a roster space. So I, I, I think they were looking for, you know, like a guy like Dmitry Orlov. He's uh, RFA. He's going to be up at the end of the summer this year. And so uh, that's a guy who's going to get a little bit of a, a, a bump up. Uh, you got a Nate Schmidt who's going to get a bump up. 
So, and those guys are actually two of the best uh, possession players defensively for the Capitals. It's not Brooks Orbix, surprisingly. Uh, it, it's Dmitry Orlov and Nate Schmidt who are doing a lot of the uh, carrying a lot of the water along with uh, Matt Niskanen. So, um, they, you know, the cap space they needed they needed to get rid of this cap space. Um, and I think that what Brian McClellan was trying to do was basically, you know, there's no guarantee he could have gotten rid of like over the off season. So. Uh, this just made a bunch of sense because instead of getting nine hundred thousand dollars of cap space by sending him to AHL Hershey, uh, he gets that two two point two five million back. So um, that's that's why I had to do it. So let's talk about Brooks like for a second here because as Toronto Maple Leafs fans, we want to know kind of what we're getting. And from what I've heard from Caps fans that have reached out on Twitter, um, Brooks like was a was a basically a, he'd score a point every two games, right? He was kind of a point five points per game player before this season yeah but you know he's not necessarily a guy that would show up on the score sheet every every night neither was daniel winnick but played a very sound sort of hockey game uh but from what i've heard the during the lockout he suffered a pretty severe injury in russia and he was never quite the same is that true yeah okay so what happened with with like it was a little bit before the lockout um but basically he actually played in switzerland and with, i remember uh, he went to switzerland and we talked about this uh, together at, at Kettler. He told me about how he got the golden jersey because he was the Clotten Flyers' leading scorer. So you have to wear a, like a like a golden helmet and like what? I, I think like a special jersey. This was something that in the NLA league uh, that you you would just have to do if you were the leading scorer. Like you would, other teams would have to know who your leading scorer was. What? So you have to wear a special oh my god, that is such a terrible idea. <laughs> that is the worst idea. How are fans going to know who no, to watch? Because they look at the game sheet. Look it up on your phone. Don't make them a target. It was, it was so great to cover him in Switzerland because he'd always be wearing the golden helmet. He'd just be so That's ridiculous. Fun. Oh, so, my God. So, so that was really fun. But, yeah, towards the end of this, uh, right before the lockout, uh, and, and he, he hurt his groin. Uh, he tried to come back from it. It didn't work out. He, he would do something else. He'd re-injure it. Uh, eventually, he had surgery, and it took about a year and a half for him to be completely healthy. I, I don't know if it's the groin, uh, which is his lack of production uh, now. Uh, I just think he's an older guy now, and and his role in the Capitals changed. Um, the thing about like is, you know, we we constantly got people, uh, you know, to, we had Facebook commenters on R and B. We would have. Uh, you know, general commenters just constantly complaining about his contract. Like, Brooks like he only has one goal. He's terrible. Got to get rid of his cap hit, you know. Yeah, it sounds and, like a commenter on the internet, by the way. You do a very yeah, good exactly. impression. But, uh, you know, Like did really well in his fourth line role. I mean, his uh, PDO was 96.7, meaning he was really, really unlucky. Um, you know, he only scored one goal this year. But I can't remember one time when I was like, oh, Like. Oh. Like, he, 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 he was playing a fourth line role and he did it well. Um, and he was one of the, uh, I, I remember, uh, me and Peter were talking, he's, he's one of my, uh, partners on the site and, uh, Ruff Like and Michael Lotto were the best shutdown pairing on the capital. So he was a great penalty killer. He just, he just doesn't really score anymore. Um, but you know, he's a great guy. He's, he's, uh, he was one of the most beloved players in the community here. Uh, so I think, I think that's kind of the bigger part of this. And I think, you know, he was. The Capitals traded Peter Bondra, who's probably one of the most loved players, uh, all-time Capitals players, and they traded him for Like. And uh, you know, Like was here through uh, the rebuild, the good years, the down years after the good years, and now that this team is like finally an inch away or a couple inches away from from maybe uh, you know winning a championship, they're they're getting rid of him. So I think a lot of fans really took it hard that way. Well. And uh, you know what this reminds me of, like the way you're describing him and his situation? I can't help but think 2011, maybe 2012, Mason Raymond with the Canucks. Mm -hmm. Like just, we're in first place, we're doing so good, but damn it, we need to complain about something. Every time we lose a game, it needs to be someone's fault. Uh, Brooks like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like... There's definitely uh, the Capitals. It, it seems like once they get rid of one guy that everybody hates, uh, they, you know, there's there's a certain section of our fandom that just finds another guy to hate. 
Like, if it, isn't, <laughs> if it wasn't, my, you know, Mike Green was a guy who, you know, he was very uh, a polarizing figure. Like, half the fan base just loved him. And then the other half of, uh, of the fans was like, oh, he's soft, he's always injured, he's no good. But then, you know, then I'd look at his possession to be the best defenseman, and, and I'd be like, you know, he's, he's, he's great, you know? So, I don't, well, I don't know. It, 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 you know, now that it's like, Life's gone, I'm sure. Now we're going to hear a lot about how Mark and Johansson is, is soft. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, with with a guy like Brooks, like, from what I've heard, and this is a story that uh, a guy named Dan reached out, actually, on, on Twitter, and we were kind of talking back and forth, and he said, you know, have fun with Brooks, like, because he's a good, he's a really, really good dude. And, and one of the things that he said... Uh, was that there? He sent me a story. It's PSU Dan on, underscore Dan on Twitter. Oh yeah, I know Dan. Uh, okay, well there you go. <laughs> so you know Dan. Um, and yeah, so he said he sent me this this blog from the Washington Post, and this is after, and I think it was in 2010 uh, when uh, Washington lost to the, in the seventh game to the Montreal Canadiens. Oh, don't bring that up. So <laughs> Brooks Like is going home after this heartbreaking loss. And uh, there's these people on the on the side of the road, and they've pulled over, and uh, and basically he pulls over too, and he said, "Is there is there a problem?" And they're like, "Well, you know, we got a flat tire," and this is in the on the highway, and and they're like, "CAA is on its way," and he said, "Don't worry about it," and he just proceeded to change their tire, and he was <laughs> in his suit after the game, and these were yep. Caps fans, they were they had their Caps jerseys on, they were at the game. Is that a true? That's a true story, right? That's a, that's a one hundred percent true story. Uh, and just to plug Dan Steinberg of the Washington Post, who wrote that, um, he's one of my heroes uh, in journalism. Uh, yeah, like is a guy. Uh, the best way to kind of describe him is he will always make that extra moment for someone. Um, I kind of shared it on Arm and B today. Uh, I actually uh, was covering so Brooks like his first name. He's named after. Uh, Orioles third baseman and Hall of Famer uh, Brooks Robinson. Huh. Um, so that story came out, uh, I think it was about two years ago, and uh, the Orioles invited Like to uh, throw the ceremonial first pitch. And so naturally, I'm a huge Orioles fan. I, I ended up going and covering it with uh, Chris Gordon, our photographer. Uh, and uh, so we're there, uh, and he's about to get a private tour of, of the clubhouse and everything, and uh, he goes, hey, do you guys, you guys want to come along? And uh, he ended up, he, he knew, he basically knew that I was a big Orioles fan, so he kind of let us go around the uh, the private tour with us. And it was just something I didn't expect, you know, it just was like a normal media guy. Yeah, um, but he's a warm, he seems like a warm guy yeah. and, and a good guy to have in the in the clubhouse, in the clubhouse. Absolutely. <laughs> in the dressing <laughs> yeah, room. I, I, he's, a, he's a great guy to have in the, in the, in the locker room, and I think, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's really interesting because he's such like a down-to-earth guy, but then he's dating Julian Huff. So he is. <laughs> oh, engaged. Wow. Yes, they're engaged. Yep. Good for them. Well, and and I I think them. We need <laughs> we need in Toronto, we need players that can come in and, and at Lula Morello. We'll, we'll, we, sorry, let me cut out. Of we need players. Off. We need players. Yeah, that was that was the finish line, period. Uh, but we also we need players that are going to be able to come in and I, you know, I hate I don't want to get I don't want to put too much stock into this, but it is important to have elders on the team who have been there, who have good attitudes, and can teach you how to be a professional. It is important to have that, as it is in any profession. And and I think he se- he seems, and correct me if I'm wrong, he seems like that kind of guy. Yeah, absolutely. And I think he's been through uh, a complete rebuild before. I mean, I think it may have been very uh, disheartening for him to go from, obviously, a first-place team, the team he loves, uh, about to get a Stanley Cup, maybe. I, I don't want to jinx it, obviously, because uh, they have not been playing well lately. But... uh you know, I, I, you know, I, I think he's a great guy to have because he knows the, what it takes, and he's not afraid to call out guys either if they're not putting in uh, enough hard work and stuff like that. He, he's definitely a guy who's great with the media. I think he'll become a media darling in Toronto. What do we? Uh, uh, what? That's great. That's great because that's not easy to do anymore here. Um, but <laughs> no. uh, but, Carrick, what do we know about him? What do you know about him? Well, oh, what, I what I know, Adam, is that he's an A prospect. Well, I, I according, learned that from, according from to Lou, Lou Amarillo. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm sure Ian agrees, right? Uh, I mean, okay, so like, <laughs> I, <laughs> Steve's already shaking his head. No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's an A prospect. When I think of an A prospect, I think of. A guy like Andre Burakovsky, a guy like Evgeny Kuznetsov, who has this 
just undeniable talent that he's just going to make it and, and be a superstar. So calling him an A talent just is, you know, I think he was a fifth round pick. Um, he's kind of small. Uh, you know, he's a good skater, but, but that's another thing that he needs to continue to work on um, and, and picking his spots better. Carrick is, okay, so my experience with Carrick, I, I've, I've actually talked to him a lot, and uh, he's a very, very, very smart guy. Um, he is, he, he's also going to be very endearing. I mean, you got two guys who can really talk well at the media, definitely. Um, and Carrick is, is a guy who, he has a little bit of an offensive leaning. Um, he's a great, you know, he, he's good on the power play. He's a great passer. Uh, he has a great shot from the point. Um, but I, I'm not 100% sold yet um, on if he's going to make it in the NHL. I think with Carrick, uh, he got really early exposure to the NHL about two years ago with uh, Adam Oates. Um, he made the team out of training camp, and uh, it, it maybe was too soon for him, uh, and he got exposed pretty quickly. Uh, since then, he's been working really hard in, in Hershey. Um, I kind of... Dis- he, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Brian Rafalski uh, in the terms of the, of, of the way he plays. Um, he gets beat uh, in good. the overtime of gold medal games? No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm, not sure, I'm, not, I'm thinking how he plays. I'm not saying he's just for the same thing. Uncool. Uh, you know, kind of smaller. He, he, can, he can definitely chip in offensively. Um, it, it's just yet to be seen if he's going to be a positive uh, possession player. Uh, who can really handle a lot of NHL minutes, but... Uh, so he's an A yeah. prospect in that you need the letter A to spell Carrick. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, uh, how's I, that for a breakdown? I, I've heard a long-standing thing with Carrick about... I, I love Chidova, which is... Uh, a, a, I don't know if they have Mexican food. Did they have it up there in Canada? What are they? What are, what are you asking? Uh, Chidova. Is, there, is, is, is that up there in Canada? I don't even know. No, so, but it sounds delicious. What is that? <laughs> Sounds well, like a character well, from Tekken. <laughs> <laughs> me, me and Carrick constantly rip each other uh, on Twitter uh, because he loves Chipotle and I love Kidoba. And, you know, he always is like, oh, come on, come on, come on. Well, one eat, gives you E. coli, the other doesn't. I <laughs> I'll still eat that E. coli. <laughs> Chipotle is delicious, and I stand. Uh, not as delicious as Panago well, Pizza. Well, obviously. Go ahead and throw obviously. <laughs> Obby, <laughs> audio slave. <laughs> Obby. Audio slave. But, with Carrick, though, I think he needed an opportunity to know if, if he was an NHL player, and I think if there's any type of guy who could grow into an NHL role, like a bottom three, uh, maybe maybe a, a, a fourth guy, uh, I think I think Toronto could be that opportunity for him, just because they're, he's going to get a ton of playing time, uh, and they can kind of ride out his his struggles, you know, at first. But right. I, I think it's possible he's gone to two straight All Star games. Um, I think uh, last year he had his hardest shot was ninety eight miles per hour in a, in the AHL. In, in, in the AHL All Star game in the skills competition, he, he he one of his attempts was ninety eight point five point three something like that. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So now, he, can he keep it lower than ten feet? Because that was always Dion Phaneuf's problem. <laughs> <laughs> he he, Dion Phaneuf liked to field goal pucks from the point. Yeah, he uh, he once scored a goal off Mikhail Grabowski's head. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it's yeah, like to be a Leaf fan. Bruce Orpik. <laughs> Bruce Orpik scored a goal the other night. He missed it up by like seven feet, but it went off a guy's glove in it. It was it was so ugly. It was ugly hockey, beautiful. I guess still counts. But, <laughs> doesn't matter. But you know, one thing I, I was reminded of when I saw like. First in a uh, Leafs jersey tonight, he looked exactly like the Anthony, to me at least. Okay, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just got rid of the real one. Like, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look, I, I look forward to Brooks Like being an excellent Toronto Maple Leaf almost as much as I look forward to the next time you're on this podcast. Yeah. <gasps> almost as much as I look forward to. To Connor Carrick winning the Norris Trophy and us playing this audio back. <laughs> That's right. Don't get ahead of yourself, Steve. Yeah. Uh, look, if Brooks like is Dion Phaneuf, then Connor Carrick is a Norris winner, okay? And also, I mean, <laughs> truly, with what you said about Connor Carrick, you know, ever since he left, this organization has been looking for its next Aki Berg. So it's good. <laughs> it's good that we are, we might be on that road. Well, he's he's like a top five pick. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't put that on Carrick, but he is wearing Aki Berg's number tonight. 
as, lo- as well oh, as no. Thomas Eric's number, as well as Cole Iacobo's number, as well as Todd Warner's number. Petter Granberg. <laughs> and Petter Granberg. Crazy. See, I look at it as Carrick's wearing Ovechkin's jersey number, which is oh, very funny. Oh, hey! And right there is the difference between our two teams. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ian, thank you so much uh, for uh, for coming on. Give yourself a shout out here. Where can we find you? Uh, you can find me at RussianMachineNeverBreaks.com. Uh, and our Twitter is uh, at Russian Machine. And my personal is at Ian Olin. All right. At Ian Olin. Spelled like Matthias? No. O-L-A-N-D. No, you know what? I looked it up. I, I think I'm distantly related to him somehow. Are you one of those Ellis Island stories where they're just like, yeah, that's how you spell it? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I, I think so. You need well, to get on Ancestry.ca like Mr. Dangle has. <laughs> yeah. I think I, another really quick before I go, another funny story is that uh, uh, my ancestors in Canada, they had an Oland beer, which was eventually bought by Molson. And the Oland beer still exists. Because no, there's, there's a yeah. there's an Olin beer plant in Halifax where I used to work right across the street from, and it always smelled like hops in the afternoon. My God, those uh, the, I think they are distant relatives of me. Wow, okay, I have so. I have drank your family, sir. That's oh wow! <laughs> well, well, I've never heard a better time to end an interview. Hey man, never. thank you so much, Ian, for being on. Uh, check out the Rush Machine. Follow them on Twitter. Totally worth it. a great follow. And you know what? A team to definitely watch going into the into the Stanley Cup playoffs this year. Because if it seems like it's anybody's year, it's the Blackhawks. But then yeah. after that, <laughs> it's the Capitals. <laughs> thanks, man. Talk to you later. All right, thanks, guys. See you, buddy. And we got to go on Sportsnet 590, the fan. Uh, but if you download this this podcast, sportsnet.ca, go to iTunes, subscribe to the Steve Dangle podcast, uh, spelled how it sounds. Uh, make sure that you make sure you do that because we got to break down all the Leaf stuff still, as well as um, a few other notables. I got to roll up the rim on my cup. Oh my god, we need to find that out. Find that out. Is that a Panago Pizza roll up the rim, sir? Sure is. It is what's on the inside that counts. You that was suck. a really terrible tie-in. I'm sorry. I'm going to drink your family. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was a good line. <laughs> we'll see you later. So so you don't like that drink you in line, which I think you're just wrong. I think that I think that the listeners will back me on that one. I'm a lot of things. I don't I, know if I'm wrong. I think uh, not now. <laughs> I think that they will love this. Also, we just got to talking in the break about um, my favorite family guy line ever. And this is Tim McCarver, according to Family Guy, <laughs> who's a baseball announcer. <laughs> Hang on, it's ro- it's loading. <sighs> Well, I guess he couldn't be any worse than Tim McCarver is at sportscasting. In my view, as good as the Yankees were in the first half of this game, that's how as bad they've been now. (laughs) (laughs) So funny. And what's great is the last cartoon I watched before this was Cartoon Wars, where South Park explains that Family Guy is written by seals. Yes, which is great. I watched uh, I watched some of the new Family Guy seasons, and uh, the 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 fact that they brought back the wacky races uh, with the did you see that where they were talking about the family new car? Guy they did have, that? Yeah, they have Tesla. South Park they, did that. Sorry, not Family Guy. South Park. That's oh, what I, mean. I was oh, like, yeah. Family Guy ripped off South Park. No, they didn't. Sorry, I meant South Park because you mentioned Family Guy written by. You know. We need to get cereal. We need to get cereal. <laughs> uh, um, Matthew McConaughey. So, S- Steve, the problem here, the problem with the, the deadline here is yeah. that the Leafs didn't do anything. You're right. They did nothing. They didn't do anything. Except for all the things they did. Which was nothing. I mean, in a 24-hour period, they didn't trade people. You're right. You, so that w- means they did nothing. Would you like me to read the nothing they did? Yeah, can you can you can we spell out just how nothing this was? Okay, he, here is everyone who has left the Leafs organization since February 9th, which was 20 days ago, <laughs> less than 3 weeks. Daniel Winnick, James Reimer. <laughs> sad, sad man. Daniel Winnick, James Reimer, Jeremy Morin, sort of, Roman Polak, Nick Spalling, Sean Mathias, Dion Phaneuf, Matt Fratton, sort of, Casey Bailey, Ryan Rupert, Cody Donahue, and a fifth, an Anaheim fifth round pick from 2016, which, by the way, the Leafs got for Corbinian Holzer. Corbinian Holzer, you remembered. Here is everyone that has come in. 
Connor Carrick, Brooks Like, Alex Stalock, Ben Smith, Rafi Torres, sort of, Colin Smith, Jared Cowan, sort of, <laughs> Colin Greening, Milan Mahalik, Tobias Lindbergh, a second round pick uh, from Ottawa in 2017, a second round pick from Washington in 2016, a second round pick from San Jose in 2017, a second round pick from San Jose in 2018, a fourth round pick in 2016 from Colorado, and a fourth round conditional pick from San Jose in 2018. But nothing happened. Nothing! Nothing. Nothing! I want to run through... I, Holy th- shite. That's a lot. That's a lot. Now, I, I thought Lou Lamorello's press conference today was quite telling. Quite telling. Okay. What about some things. And I, I, I think the first thing is where they stand on Leo Komarov. Because we've debated many times on this show, what were they going to do with Leo? Now's the time to sell high. And he said... They never even considered trading him. He said, word for word, he is a core member of this hockey team. I don't have a problem with it. That's great. There was, what, what, is there a better compliment for Lou Lamorello to give anybody? No, and, and that's a guy that I think is is very conservative with his compliments. You know, the, you know, it just says excellent things about Komarov. People were tweeting me like, is Leo Komarov going to be the next captain of the Leafs? Mm-hmm. No, but you need... Guys to fill in a leadership role and be the, I don't know, for lack of a better term, sort of captain, <laughs> while there isn't one. And I mean, who is one on this team uh, more than Leo Komarov? You know? I don't know. I don't. I don't think there is. Um, Maybe a Hunwick. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's the thing. And is it conceivable, Steve? Do you think? And I mean, this is something we've seen in the last five years or so before Dion Phaneuf got to town. Um, is it conceivable that we go into next year and and play out all of next year without a captain? Yeah, that's probably the right way to go. That's probably the right way Let to go. Let someone emerge. Unless you're absolutely convinced the next captain is going to be Morgan Riley. Uh, but it, uh, he's quite young. I mean, not that Steve Eiserman was quite young, too, when he was named captain. <laughs> and Crosby and Taves and, you know, are is Morgan Riley Crosby or Taves, yeah, right? And, uh, I don't, you don't need one. You don't have to have one. Uh, let them play. Let the kids play. I mean, we're watching next year right now. Tonight is a little glimpse of next year. Um, you know, we kind of talked about this last show. You can't possibly judge the Leafs um, <clears throat> how they're going to be next season. Because who the heck's going to be on the roster? I think we're getting a glimpse. Well, it, and it's interesting to see guys like it wasn't just <laughs> Kapanen and Nylander. And interesting that Connor Brown was not called up. Uh, no, that made sense. Why? That made sense to me. Well, he was the Marley's leading scorer last year. He's been good since coming back from injury, but he just came back from injury. Like, okay, he's then barely that... played in the AHL this year. That's why. So I'm sure there's a lot of people that looked at that and thought, hmm. The Marleys have, uh, like, Lou, one thing he was definitely not lying about is there are tons of guys on the Marleys who deserve it. Connor Brown being one of them, and he didn't get it. Uh, but they gave one to Zach Hyman, who the team loves. I think we have some audio. Yeah, huh? we do, actually. Um, um, this is from Kyle. your interview with Kyle Dubas. Yes. Oh, are you going to play it? Yeah, I'm going to play it right now. Now, okay. I should warn you, uh, there might be some jingling from Iggy's dog collar, mm-hmm. and you might hear my birds in the background. Steve needs a home studio. I didn't what plan on using this audio for anything other than transcription, so bear with me. Uh, who has surprised you the most this season, um, pleasantly? <laughs> I would say, um, I would say, there's on up front. Um, certainly, Zach Hyman has. Uh, I mean, I've known Zach for a long time. He's been uh, he's been uh, excellent for us uh, in, in all regards. He's just one of the best penalty killers in the league. Uh, after a slow start offensively, he's really started to to come along and, and is producing very well. Um, he's a tenacious worker, excellent on the forecheck, and not just getting there and rattling guys around on the forecheck, but getting there and getting the puck back and letting us play on offense, which to me is is the key thing possession wise. He's one of our best players, if not our best player. Wow! And, uh, now he's starting to also score. Um, That's big. That's a huge That's compliment big on the Marlies. On the Marlies, and and um, well, it also shows that they keep analytics for the American Hockey League as well, which stats are so hard to find. Uh, anything beyond the basics with the American Hockey League, their stats well, suck. Th- maybe that's why they bought Extra Skater. Uh, well, it's certainly part of the reason. But, you know, it's funny. He said he's starting to score more, and I'm like, all right, we'll see about that. That afternoon, we went and saw the Marlies, and Hyman put up uh, an assist on each goal that the Marlies scored. Yeah. So he was pretty good. So I interviewed Dubas, and he said that about Hyman. Without being prompted, I didn't say anything. Uh, uh, Ten minutes later, Five minutes later, ten minutes later, I'm talking to Sheldon Keefe. I ask him the same question, and 
I, I just needed a where to where to go to. I think it was five twenty. Five twenty. That's it. Hang on. Hang on. I mean, I did tell you that before the show. Okay, we had a bit of an. Why issue are you here. prepared, Adam? I would be more prepared. However, we had a bit of an issue with the audio things, okay. and because we don't use great computers in here, oh. I would say subpar computers having a bit of an issue. So I'm having to play these raw rather than editing them the way I'd prefer to do. So here it is with Sheldon Keith. Who's 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 been a pleasant surprise for you this season? That was a good question, Elmer Fudd. I'm surprised. Um, you know, I, I think there's a long list of guys I would say are, are pleasant surprises. Um, you know, I think you have to look at the right word because I think... Okay, Sheldon, let's get to it. ...on a lot of the players coming in. A lot of guys that get to this level have had some pretty good seasons. Some guys that Let Keith play, actually, because uh, the next guy he says uh, was interesting. That's good enough. No. Uh, <laughs> oh, all right, stop there. Hey, there you go. Okay. Uh, so, and you cut Dubas off before he got to him, but he also brought up Justin Hall. Um, Sorry about cutting him off. Sorry. No, 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 not at all. I, like, we brought it up because of Zach Hyman, who's with the Leafs. Okay, Sheldon, seriously. Can we stop interrupting Sheldon. the show? It's our show, Sheldon. <laughs> but the point is, you know, there is there is some really great talent on this team and a lot of people are asking you know what how are the Leafs going to stock their roster next year they may not uh, you know with the exception of the RFAs they may not have to really go out and get anybody you know they've got some veteran presence you've got Lupo you've got Van Riemsdyk you've got Komarov right oh uh, we'll see what happens with Lupo okay yeah, but mm-hmm. Komarov if, for sure Van Riemsdyk for sure if they can pull Lupo out of the cryo the chamber um yeah. we can you know if he can play the first 10 games that'd be great uh <laughs> And I feel so bad for him in saying that because it's injuries are rarely a player's fault. You know, if he comes back fully healthy, he'd be great. Uh, could hang, could hang twenty goals. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's a very strange player. Um, they they might just go okay. Well, all these guys are getting promotions because you know that those kids are they a they want it because they've made them wait. They've made them really wait for this. Two, now they're going to know what Babcock expects going into this summer and they know they're going to have to be in peak physical condition just to even get a sniff and number three they've been playing this system when was the last time you were this excited for a Leaf game um probably probably the opening game of the season after they were in the playoffs like oh you know because we were all really excited so much promise right oh but so we're talking a, a few years now yeah because I knew last year it was doom. I knew it, even though they were doing really well and in the playoffs. And with Randy Carlisle as a head coach, you know, I, I you just knew. <sighs> but oh, sorry, what were you going to say? Justin? No, go ahead, go ahead. Well, someone tweeted. Uh, it was one of the LeafsNation dot com writers. I can't remember who. I think it was hashtag John Tent. Um, basically, oh, good. We're not going to get any rumors for three months. Yes, we are. Because mm-hmm. I think you forgot about Jimmy Vesey. Potentially mm-hmm. uh, leaving Nashville, coming Zaitsev. to the Leafs. Nikita Zaitsev, which sounds like a slam dunk. Um, I think the prospect's name was Goloshev, a guy Jeff Vayette uh, wrote about recently. Supposedly, he's one of the best prospects outside of North America. So look for uh, heat to ramp up there. But both Dubis and Keefe, unprompted, praised Justin Hole. And I wonder if he gets an NHL deal. I just wonder. Also, Andrew Campbell, Marley's captain, is signed to an NHL deal. Yeah. And it goes into next year. So Yeah. 
Well, and, and that's the thing is like, do you need? Okay, so so they didn't need to win this year. The Leafs. No. Yeah. Do you need to win next year? You okay? This is the strip it to the bone year. You you got to string together some wins so, next year. Okay. Some you can still finish bottom ten. I'd like them to finish out of the bottom five. Um, you got to show a, a little bit of progress. I understand it's a rebuild, but for the love of God, you can't have another year like this. Which means, though, I mean, if if they're really going to give these guys a shot, and they have to, they really have to now. Um, although, if you were to ask Lou Morello, he doesn't have to do anything. Uh, <laughs> hey, he's a seventy-three-year-old man. He does. I keep saying it, but he does not give a shit. <laughs> Um, doesn't have to. That means then you are probably going to see less of the the sign and trade guys, the guys that you bring in on one year deals who you you deal at the deadline, right? It's like oh, we're going to give you you know the, the, less of the Sean Mathias types. Probably, maybe well, they get one or two, but you need those open spots, especially in the second line where you're going to have. I mean, you could have potentially Bozak and Kadri going into next year, right? You could. I, I wonder. If they have a shot, so one of the reasons I wasn't too upset with this deadline and them not moving one of Boys, Grabner, or Parento is I wouldn't mind seeing all three of those guys come back. I really wouldn't. Parento, you have to give a bit of a raise because he had a, he's had a very good season so far. Grabner would have to take a pay cut to go anywhere. No one's going to pay him $3 million anymore. And Brad Boys, you maybe bump up a tiny bit from seven hundred grand. Yeah. You can bring all three of those guys back. Which, one which year deal. Hilarious. You bu- you bump at Brad boys up. You know, a hundred grand. No one bats an eye. But that's a hundred thousand like, dollars. I know. I know. I know. For eight, what a steal! I'm like, oh, wow, yeah. that's a hundred thousand dollar raise. Like, wow. <laughs> it's true. It is. It's a different life. It's a different life. But like, getting anything for Brad boys would have been winning with house money. You know, you got him on a PTO. Uh, Grabner, you dealt five guys for, but. The prize of that trade was the roster spots. Yeah. That was the prize of the trade. One of the benefactors is playing in the game tonight. His name's Nikita Sh- Soshnikov. Wow. Sausage. Sosh- Nikita Sosh- 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 <laughs> Nikita Sausage. <Sosh-Nikov. laughs> um, you know, and then Parento was the only one you really should have got a pick for, but he loves it here. For why, I don't know. Apparently, Parento is absolutely out of his mind. No, because he loves Mike Babcock. Yeah, isn't it nice playing for a coach that wants you? Yeah. Yeah. But is there a point to having him on the roster for the next two months? You'd have to ask him. Uh, you got to be respectable for the love of God. You know, and, and you know what? It doesn't hurt uh, the prospects playing their first five, ten games of their NHL career. It doesn't hurt them to be feeding an NHL player, an mm-hmm. NHL forward passes, or to be receiving them. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, you can't just throw a team of Marlies, no matter how talented they are, and go, here you go. Then you're Edmonton. Then you're Edmonton. And you need, and, and like, I mean, I think we all have had mentors in our life, right? We've always, we've all had mentors to, to take us through and go, okay, you know, kid, here's what you need to do. And, and they it can't te- just be Babcock. Yeah, they've got to teach you the tough lessons. And they're coworkers. They're coworkers that do this. They're not your boss. So Babcock's your boss. Then you've got coworkers who go, okay, I'm a little higher up on the chain. I'm going to show you how this works. Think think that you could do really, really great things. Potentially, you could even be better than me. But I want you to, I want you to learn. And I like, I like a guy like P.A. Parento in, the, in that role. Because P.A. Parento knows what it is to almost be out. Almost be out of the game. Totally. Well, ish. geez, I think he was bought out. He went from making four million bucks to... One and a half. One and a half. And again... It's all relative. Yeah, and he was playing <laughs> for stri- Michel Therrien. Yeah, that's strife by NHL standards, certainly not by ours. But, you know, he, he was, yeah, like you said, he was he was almost in Brad Boy's territory. And there's another guy who was almost out and has ton, tons of experience. And I liked uh, the camera that, you know, follows the players out of uh, the dressing room into where they got to walk out. It was William Nylander walking directly behind Brad Boy's. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you do... Two Leafs first round picks. <laughs> <laughs> great job. You know, <laughs> when he's right, he's right. Damn, to, Adam Wild. 10 to 70% of the time. <laughs> you know, Parento was drafted in the ninth round. I love seeing guys wow. drafted after the seventh yeah. round Boy, because that means they've been around for a while. Daniel Winnick being one of them. Yeah. Parento is really like a, 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 literally at every point in his career, you'd always say not likely. 
Mm. Not likely to make it, not likely to stay, not likely to succeed, and here he is. And he's 20 goals, pretty much money in the bank. I like that. Except and I know last year. We rarely talk about the intangibles. We rarely talk about the guys that are like character guys because what happened with the Leafs when we started this show was we got too hung up on the character and not hung up enough on the skill. Now we got lots of raw skill in the system. And what you need are guys who have skill, have skill, lots of skill. I mean, Joffrey Lupul's case, that's a guy with a ton of skill. If he could he's just still, stay he's healthy. He's still got skill. Um, but then the, then you've got, and, and obviously James Van Riemsdyk as well, although he's more of like a power forward rather than yeah. a finesse another, guy. Another thing is the Leafs aren't actually this bad. People do need to remember that. Like, they're injured to holy hell. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. they needed they everyone to be... for a while. JVR. JVR is a huge one. Like, uh, they're not good. And they needed everyone to be healthy to even be semi somewhat respectable but they are injured to holy hell and that's not including Roby Dyer Horton do you realize there was a point on this podcast where we talked a little bit jokingly sort of about the fact that the Leafs may be making a run at the playoffs this year during this season like um, it was bandied about like let's not ruin the rebuild by mm-hmm. doing well this yeah, year we were before, like single digits out of the playoffs so. before JVR got hurt they were five points out mm-hmm. That's and nothing. there was another point around Christmas where they were three points out. They were close, man. They were close. Like, f- holy shit. If the Leafs even make the final wild card spot, obviously not now, but Next if year. they had, Babcock deserves the Jack Adams and no one else deserves to even be nominated. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Well, and I love I love his attitude. I could, I could work for a guy like Mike Babcock because... Yeah. He, because he, in his press conference today, he said, you know, people are like, what are your expectations tonight? And he's like, I want to see, re- repeat this back to me, I want to see which one of these guys are real players. Oh, I just want to see which one of these guys are real players. You know, if they, if they, you know, you can do it in the in the AHL, but, you know, can you do it here? I want to see if they play right, work, uh, work right, live right. <laughs> you know, be a professional. It's amazing. It's it's. I mean, I love I love his attitude. I love that. And he, I, I liked he he showed. Uh, I like Mark Spector used the term hockey man today. I think and a lot of people didn't like it. And then when I was thinking about Babcock's quotes today, <laughs> hey. I was like, he's a hockey man. And what I mean by that is he's actually a hockey man. Well, he had this quote where he's like, "Oh, so there's a bunch of paper transactions. Uh, I don't know about any of that." Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, that's awesome. Well, and what I loved like, about it, I don't it, want him to know about that. I don't no. care. He but, headed he headed that off right at the beginning. He jumped onto the microphone and was like, "Don't ask me any goofy shit. I'm a I man. I'm 40. <laughs> like right off the bat, I am taking this press conference and I am." Directly Directing you, which I like. You know, uh, you see my face, you recognize me, you can Google me. I'm not fucking Brandon Prudham. I'm not goddamn Kyle <laughs> <Yeah>. Lewis. <Lewis-like. laughs> Just have that on a Mike Babcock teacher. Not fucking Prudham. I'm not fucking Brandon Prudham. Like, <laughs> it's true, though. Like, I don't care that... Look, he did have this attitude the one time I was ever in a, in a scrum with him. Uh, it was when Reimer was hurt. And he's he was basically like, uh, you know... It's the medical staff's job and Reimer's job. If he's available, he's playing. If he's not, he's not playing. It's that simple. Babcock is going to play the players that are available to him. And at the time of that press conference, he didn't know. And it wasn't his responsibility to know. He's not the GM. I love so, that. I love, I love that. it. I love it. He just, he, he, he's very matter of fact, and he'll tell you kind of like it is. And what I like about Babcock is in his own mind, he knows what his responsibilities are to a T. There's not, there's Coach. a lot of, a lot of coaches who overreach and stuff like that. Cause it isn't his, his Turn. job. Turn. Right. <laughs> like, well, you know, Turn. Ooh, I'm going to talk about uh, this player, even though I don't know. <laughs> he lack <It's>... respect. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the big one. Habs fans love. <laughs> he lack respect. Which Habs player called, was it Prust that called, um, the Ottawa coach a fat bug eyed walrus? <laughs> yes, it was. Oh my it God. Was. Oh, that was beautiful. Um, uh. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it it just seems like, you know, I know we're glad handing the Leafs a little bit here, but I got to say they did a really great job. And the other thing I like, again, is their candor. Lou Lamorello coming out today. And this was Sav. This was Savage right here. Oh my goodness. Talking about Jared Cowan says they're shutting him down, buying him out this summer. And he said, literally, for, we had to take his contract back for obvious reasons. He will not play a game for us. He will be bought out. Yeah, I'm that trying is to hard. think. I'm trying to think of the last time a player, like it was revealed publicly, uh, 
Like, how far in advance can you reveal you're going to buy someone out? He can't be bought out until, like, what, June? Yeah. <laughs> but they'll buy him out. And supposedly, I heard he was actually pretty sad. Like, he was going to fly people out. He thought he was going to play with the Leafs. Oh. Yeah, sorry about that, pal. Oh, well, they're going to get a lot of cap relief from that. For so one good. season. And then the next season will be a little less. It's, Whatever. Yeah, I mean, you you got rid of Dion Phaneuf. There's your cap relief. He also, and Phil Kessel, he said... Um, you know, he said this year that the whole the whole thing this year has been about flexibility of being being able to to. They know that the cap's going to flatten out for the maybe even go down. Now they got flexibility. Speaking of flexibility, there was a great quote uh, at dinner uh, from Down Goes Brown, Sean McIndoe. Do you know who the um, the leaf on the books for the longest is? Right now. now. All right, let's let's play this game here. So, okay, okay, hang on. Okay, hang on. I can't guess because I have general manager open. Oh, that's uh, unfair. Sorry. Uh, for the <laughs> longest right now, it's Joffrey Lupo. No. Hold on. Really? Yes. Hold on. Don't. Because Jake Gardner, Joffrey Lupo came over in the same deal, so it can't be them. Is it? It's not JVR, is it? No. Who is it? It is a forward. Uh, the answer is Phil Kessel's retained salary. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, not trailing, not far behind is Tim Gleason. Um, uh, also Nathan Horton. Nathan Horton. Now he's gonna be around for a while. Who cares? How much? Forget the damage that Pool and uh, Nonus and Loisel did to the Leafs organization. How much money did they cost <laughs> the Toronto Maple Leafs? Because that's like thirty million dollars. <laughs> They're just yeah. literally wiping their ass with. Well, and and I and no disrespect to to Brian Burke because I quite liked him when he was here, and he seems to have done a. Well, it's it's arguable that he's done a good and a bad job in Calgary. You know, the Derek Engelin thing has really handcuffed them, and 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 everyone arguably gets, everyone gets one or two. Yeah, and you, every every team is going to have a bad contract or a bad retain or whatever. You, you have to allow for that, um, but Brian Burke's responsible for all three of those guys coming here. Mm-hmm. We did. We talked about that before the show. He's responsible for that whole management group. Carlisle, Kessel, Fanoff. Yeah, I I still give him the benefit of the doubt where they gave him the keys and they mm-hmm. they took them away mid build. Like we got this awful Frankenstein monster of a team. Yeah, and it imploded. Uh, was it flawed? Sure, sure. Blackhawks have flaws. Every team's got Every flaws. Every team is going to have flaws. Yeah. You know? <laughs> eh. Hey, you know what doesn't have flaws? What? Panico Pizza? That's right. <laughs> Especially Hockey Night in Cinema. Oy! Hey! March 12th, Mayfair, in Ottawa. If you want to come, remember, you can you can pay a guy and he'll drive you. <laughs> from Hamilton. I don't even know if he's charging. Hockey Night in Cinema. I think it's five bucks for gas. Uh, Hockey Night oh. in Cinema in Ottawa. If you are coming, we will love to see you. You got to sign up. Uh, there's an event right, event bright. Sorry, just search Hockey Night in Cinema on Facebook. Steve, do you mind tweeting out that link just one more time? I do you will. Mind tweeting it out I'm right actually now? tweet it right now. Tweet it right now. You're on oh Twitter right goodness. now. You should do it. Uh, I was actually going to look up uh, how many tickets are left. Okay, well that's a good idea. In the meantime, I'm going to quickly step aside for that and, and say texting Daniel to 41010 is also a great thing for skate2great.org. You know what they're all about. Fabulous charity for kids or who want to play hockey. Try texting 41010 to Dangle. No, please don't do that. Uh, that will get you nowhere. Uh, what's up? How many seats are in the theater again? I think it's 320. There are 15 tickets left. <laughs> What? There are 15 tickets left. Well, You guys damn. fucking rule. <laughs> Holy smokes. No way. We are, okay. No way. A little background here. We thought going into Ottawa, we're like, there's there's no way. This might get half full. We thought going to Toronto, we wouldn't get anybody. Yeah, but Ottawa is like, how much <laughs> do we make worse. fun of Ottawa? Like everybody, but we had people driving from Ottawa. Jim, Jim, Jim the Habs fan in Ottawa. He calls himself the Shane from Ottawa now. Uh, <laughs> Jim uh, driving down, I was like, oh, okay, we got a couple, mm. but not three hundred ish. How many? How many tickets reserved? By the way, it's free. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't say the number reserved. It just says fifteen remaining. We're actually giving you pizza to attend. Yeah, so we're kind of bribing you. Exactly. 
Oh, I mean, if you want to put it that way. My holy shit. All right. Well, I will tweet it, and maybe by the end of the show, there won't be any more. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, so it'll also be Steve's birthday. Yeah. Steve's- Steve wants bell peppers for his birthday. He does. He does. A bell not- pepper necklace. A bell pepper bikini, actually, is what he's looking for. 